micro profile. Uh, I'm a, my name is Ivar Grimstad, I'm a Java champion, and I recently started as a Jakarta e developer champion, uh, developer advocate at Eclipse Foundation. Uh, and uh, this is actually my first talk in, in this role. So, some words about me. Uh, I'm a, a member of the Java community process in the executive committee there. Uh, I'm also involved in the Jakarta E working group and, and the, the development of Jakarta E uh, and uh, in the Eclipse Foundation as, as the uh, developer advocate. I'm also involved in the microprofile pro projects. I'm a net, Apache NetBeans committer and I run a local Java user group in Malmö in Sweden. And this is my Twitter handle if you want to follow me. Uh, occasionally I tweet something sensible and uh, uh, apart from that, I uh, retweet others. So, today's talk is about MicroProfile. And MicroProfile is actually currently Eclipse MicroProfile. And uh, that is because it is an Eclipse project. So, if you navigate to the project pages in, uh, at Eclipse Foundation, you'll find a MicroProfile uh, there. And the, the mission of MicroProfile is to optimize enterprise Java for creating microservices. So, so it builds on a foundation of, of enterprise Java technologies and adds some stuff on top of it so you can use that to create microservices. And the, the latest version of MicroProfile is version 3.1. It came out uh, October this year. There will be a, a version 3.2 coming out next week or something, and I'll, I'll uh, come back to that later, uh, exactly why. Uh, so, uh, as you see on the bottom here, we have uh, well-known Java E technologies or Jakarta E technologies. It's a CDI, which is context, context and dependency injection, which, which is used kind of to glue everything together. Uh, we have JSONP, which is uh, for JSON processing, uh, JSON, uh, JSONB for J uh, JSON binding, and JAXRS, uh, which is for creating RESTful endpoints. So these are kind of the fundamental technologies of Java E or Jakarta E that you need uh, to create a simple uh, microservice. And on top of this, uh, we have the, the new specification for microprofile. Uh, micro and I say specifications, and uh, this is important. So, so microprofile is a set of specifications, and these specifications are implemented by various implementations, and I'll show a wide range of them today. So, so I'll, I'll go through each of these uh, in detail with demos. So I won't be showing much slides. Uh, it would mostly be this slide, and this is the most important slide uh, of today. So uh, fr from the top corner, we have open tracing, which adds uh, possibility for distributed tracing. So you can use uh, Zipkin or Jaeger to trace your calls across services. Uh, you have open API that uh, uh, helps you generate a Swagger documentation, so you can document your services very easily. Uh, we have REST client, uh, and it, it builds on top of the JAXRS REST client, which is part of the, the uh, JAXRS specification, but it adds some nifty cool features to it, so, uh, such as uh, uh, it, it, uh, you can type uh, the, the client calls, and, and you, you can also generate the proxies to the calls, so you don't have to write so much yourself. Uh, it adds a, a configuration support, so you can uh, conf configure your applications externally, uh, meaning that uh, you don't have to rebuild your application if you change some properties. So, so you, can, you can use the system variables, environment variables, or, or a, a custom config source uh, provided you, to you by your cloud provider or yourself, so you can have uh, properties just injected in your application at runtime. It has support for fault tolerance, so you can create uh, circuit breakers and, and fallbacks, so you can uh, uh, create uh, uh, applications that d aren't affected if some of the services go down. It has support for metrics, so you can uh, uh, produce uh, uh, standard metrics uh, used for, for example, by Prometheus to monitor your applications. It has support for uh, job propagation, so, so you can have a, a, a JSON web token propagated from service to service with, the, with very little impact on your actual code. You get pretty good support for it. It has support for health checks, and the new health check 2.0 uh, adds support for, for, for uh, two health checks uh, in addition to the, the, uh, the regular one, uh, so, so you can check for uh, liveliness and readiness as well. I'll demo that later. So these are the, the eight specifications that are on top of the, 
existing Java E technologies that Microflow will provide for you. And as I said, it's spe specifications. So these are some of the implementations out there. So w when, you, you know, when you develop a microprofile application, you can code to these specifications, and then you can switch the underlying uh, vendor or implementation underneath if you uh, find out that uh, one is giving you some benefits over the other. So you have uh, Thorntail from Red Hat and Quarkus from Red Hat, uh, Web for Liberty and Open Liberty from IBM, uh, Piora from Piora, uh, Hammock is an open source project on GitHub, uh, Cumulus uh, is, is uh, ba based on, on Jetty, uh, Apache Tommy is uh, from the Tommy Tribe, uh, built on, on Tomcat, yeah, adds uh, the enterprise support to that. Heladon from, from Oracle and Launcher from uh, Fujitsu. And, this, and there are more out there, but these are some of the biggest uh, vendors that uh, implement the microprofile. Another thing that microprofile brings to the table is uh, Uber jars or, or hollow jars or a possibility to run your uh, application from command line. So traditionally, Java Enterprise is an app server that you deploy an application into. Uh, but uh, technologies like Spring Boot has made it popular to, uh, to create Uber jars so you can run it as a Java, standalone Java process. So, so all these vendors provide some Maven plugin for you or, or use the existing Maven plugins so you can create an executable jar and run it from command line, uh, as you would do with the Spring Boot application. They also have, have support various uh, uh, approaches to, to support the hollow jar approach, where you have a thinner application layer uh, in, uh, in case you want to have just your application layer very thin in your Docker container and, and kind of the application server part of it uh, as, a, as a separate layer that doesn't change that often. So if you want to get started with MicroProfile then, well, the best way to get started with MicroProfile is to go to microprofile.io. This is a web page. It's, it's an old screenshot since it shows uh, uh, version 3.0 there. Uh, I'll be using 3.0 in this demo. And uh, the best way to get started here is to use the starter. So you click on this, and you, you, you uh, get a dialog to get started with MicroProfile. And this is where I'll, I'll start the demo. So I'll, I'll uh, open this starter page and uh, show you how to get started there. So you go to, to microprofile.io and, and click on, on the uh, starter, uh, which is a beta currently. I'll blow it up a little. So uh, as you see, it's, it's uh, uh, microprofile, start microprofile.io. That's where you go. If you can't remember microprofile.io, then remember start microprofile.io. And uh, this is where you find it. So if you want to uh, generate an application here, let's call, call it, for example, Eclipse. Uh, uh, clips gone, done. And uh, I'll, I'll just the latest version, since we always go, want to go into the latest version. And you see here it pops up some, some examples I can generate. I'll choose some of them maybe later, but uh, in, in the beginning I'll just create an empty application. And when, it, when I choose the, the version here, I get the implementation of, that implements this. And the, the, the implementations of 3.0 is Thorntail, Heladon, and Open Liberty. So, so if I choose a, another microprofile version here, I get another list of, uh, of uh, vendors. So depending on which version I want to start my application on, uh, you have a different set of vendors uh, supporting it. So, so whatever implementation is your favorite, you can just choose uh, accordingly. Well, I'll, I'll go to the latest version, and I'll choose uh, Helodon for this one. So and then I just download this it's, uh, as a zip file. Uh, ex extract this zip file, and then I can uh, open this uh, th this project. Let's see. There we go. Sorry about using the wrong IDE here, but um, this is kind of what I had installed. So uh, you get the project up. Uh, the POM file is, uh, is uh, pretty uh, simple. Uh, you see that you have the, if you're well known in the Java E world, you see that you have a provider dependency for you. And that's, in this case, the microprofile 3.0 dependencies provided for you. 
And the reason it's provided is you don't need to package this into your application since it's provided to you by the implementation. And in this case, the implementation is uh, Helidon. So you get a, a, uh, a, a configuration for how Helidon does uh, its, its stuff to, to build uh, this application. So uh, what I can do when I've downloaded this one is to, to simply say Maven clean package. And, and uh, just, just build it. So you see it, it's uh, just sl select the stuff you want, download, unzip, build, and now I can run it. So if I, if I look at the, in, in the target folder, you can see I I've, I've have a, a jar generated for me. So I can start this one, Java jar, target, uh, condon. And you see, it's, it starts pretty, uh, pretty quick, and I can uh, navigate it to, to it and see here, it has a JAXRS endpoint that says, uh, hello world, which is not very in, uh, super advanced or interesting, but you see how easy it is to get started, and now you have kind of the framework to start doing things. Uh, what you also get here is, uh, and we can look at the code a little bit. So uh, the code is, ha has an application class, and if you're familiar with Spring Boot, you usually have an, uh, uh, a main application. In this case, it's, it's extending the JAXRS application, and uh, it just uh, says this is the application path, uh, and other than that, you, you really don't need anything here. The, the uh, controller is a simple uh, uh, JAXRS resource. It's the add path, hello, and it just says uh, hello world, which it does here. So this is all the code that is there. So uh, another thing you get for free from, uh, from MicroProfile is, is uh, the metrics. So uh, if you remember the, the Prometheus metrics, you can see here that you have, um, uh, have uh, uh, Prometheus metrics generated for you. And uh, these are, have different types. So, so you have the base metrics, which is uh, something that is required by the, uh, by the specification. So everybody has it, no matter which implementation you choose. If you choose one from IBM or Red Hat or Oracle, it always has these metrics. You can trust them and you can rely on having these metrics. And they also have some vendor specific metrics. So these are uh, something you can do if, if you're, in this case, an Oracle customer and you are going to be an Oracle customer, you can depend on these. These will be here. But the, they won't be there if you choose to go with an IBM or Reddit for it. And you also have uh, application uh, uh, specific metrics, but then you have to annotate the classes with these stuff to, to show them. So uh, another thing you, you, you get for free is uh, the Open API ge uh, generated for you. So if I go to Open API, or in this case it actually downloads a file, I'll, I'll use another uh, implementation to, uh, to show this. So, so, so th th this is how easy it, it is to get started. If I, for example, wanted to add some metrics to this application and say that, hey, I want this, this method counted, I, I can uh, rebuild this application and, uh, and uh, run it again, and then I should have some application-specific metrics. And as you see, it's pretty fast starting up. I can go in here to the metrics. I can, I can hit the, the, uh, the hello endpoint a, co a couple of times, go back to the metrics, reload this one, and see it should have some application metrics somewhere. Yeah, so you see, it, uh, I've hit this method four times. So this is how easy you can sprinkle your application with uh, with different kinds of metrics to, to uh, have it uh, served to your Prometheus if you want that. And you see, there are no extra starters needed to add it. There are no extra configuration. I just added the annotation in the code, and that's it. So I'll just uh, leave this one running, and let's go out here and, and generate a new one, or let's look at the, the slides again. So what I demo, demo now is, is the metrics the open API. So uh, let's continue and uh, look at the health checks. 
So, and to this, I'll, I'll just uh, generate another application also so we can look at the other vendors. So let's call it this one Liberty and choose the Open Liberty. And download this one. And as you would expect, this just unsub this one as well. Go in here and uh, uh, open the the uh, project. So in in this case, the the um, you see the dependency is exactly the same as it was with the Oracle uh, Oracle example. But here you have the the uh, tools from IBM to. Uh, to use it with Open Liberty. And the source that is generated is, is exactly the same. Uh, it has some, uh, some other, uh, uh, I wonder where these came from, okay. So, okay, I, I, I see it. it's an old uh, project when I uh, tested this. So, uh, I'll actually delete this one. Let me do that. So I can run the demo from the beginning. I'll call it something else there. I just kept, uh, uh, picked up an old uh, IntelliJ configuration. So I'll just download it there, open it. And go there. Sorry about that. So. The source here is exactly the same as, as the one uh, you had. You have the, the application path and the uh, Hello World controller. Uh, what IBM has done with Open Liberty is actually something cool. If I do a, a build of this one and uh, when that is done, I'll rather than uh, running it as, as a jar, which I could do because it's, it generates a jar for you. They, they've uh, introduced something called the uh, dev mode. So you can uh, run it and, and do the changes and it will uh, just hot deploy them uh, on the fly for you. Let's see here. So it's built and as you can see in, in this one, I have the, the jar generated for me as, as I did with the, the, um, the uh, Oracle example. But in this case, I'll uh, use the uh, tooling from IBM and, Liberty, Liberty Dev. So I just started in, in dev mode. And you see it's, it's pretty fast up and running this one as well. Let's see which port is it running on. Uh, 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 there, 8081, 81, So if we go into local host 8181, data, hello, it should say hello world, which is what you would expect. So let's uh, see how we can uh, configure this uh, or, or add, add some uh, health checks to, to this one. So uh, what I'll do is to add a, a simple class. I have a, a template for it here. I call it Duke Alive. And uh, what this one does is it implements the health check interface and, and it is annotated with the, the uh, aliveness annotation. And it says Duke is alive. So uh, when you do health checks in your application, if you run them in Kubernetes, for example, you want to have two checks. You want to have one for, for liveness and one for readiness. The liveness one is to just tell Kubernetes, hey, I'm here, don't kill me. The readiness is to tell Kubernetes, hey, you can send traffic to me. And you don't want to mix these two because the, the readiness test can take some time to get up. And uh, if it takes some time to get up, and you mix that with the liveness probe, and Kubernetes asks, are you alive, and you're still figuring out if you're ready, and then Kubernetes would kill you before you're ready. So, so you need to, to, to separate these from each other. So I'll also uh, create a readiness probe. So th this one is, it has the at readiness annotation, and it says Duke is ready, while the liveness probe says uh, Duke uh, is alive. And you see, uh, it, it hot deploys directly, so if I now go in here uh, and say, go to the health endpoint and uh, say uh, health slash live, it's just, okay, sorry about that. Did I write it wrong? Oh, it's not on data, it's there, health, live. So you see, it says uh, Duke is alive. 
And if I say, uh, uh, once I check the readiness probe, I say Duke ready, and it says uh, Duke is ready. Or I can go to the root of the health check and, and get all of them. So I get both the ready and the alive check. So, so you see it's, it's pretty simple to, um, to, to add these health checks to your system. It's, uh, you, you can even do it at runtime. So say that I, I want to configure this uh, to say something else in the world here. Then I, I can uh, use CDI to, to inject a property. And, and what I in, inject is a configuration property, which is called uh, injected value. So, and uh, it's a string. So I, I inject this value, and, I, and rather than world, I can say uh, plus this, oh, sorry, this value. And then I can configure it, and I can do it, for example, in my uh, 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 configuration file uh, like this one, so it will inject the value, injected value. Or I can override it by setting an environment variable or a system variable. So if I go in here and now and, and say, look at the data, hello, it didn't say hello injected value. But this is a part of the application, so you, you don't want to ship this. So, so uh, w what I do is to, I'll just uh, stop it. I won't rebuild it, but I'll just start it with the jar approach. Uh, I'll say, uh, set the uh, inject value as a system property is Eclipse con, and then I'll, I'll run the jar from command line. So I don't, uh, I'm not rebuilding it, I'm just uh, doing a, uh, a run of it. So I hope that the, actually the, the uh, dev mode uh, does the uh, compilation of the new stuff as well. No, it doesn't. Okay, crap. I need to uh, rebuild it actually. So, uh, because it, it just uh, builds on, on the, the, the classes, so it doesn't generate the jar file for me. So, I just say a package. So, uh, and, and then a system property will override the injected value from the, uh, from the uh, uh, property file. So, the property file is typically something you'd use uh, for a, um, a development environment on your laptop when you, when you implement this stuff. And the, uh, the system variable is something you would set in, for example, in, in your Docker container or Kubernetes environment. So if I, if I run this one now, it should say, hello, Eclipse gone. So it's Eclipse gone. So it's configured. So what I also want to show is the uh, REST client. I'll, I'll keep this one running for it uh, here. So I'll, I'll go in here and I'll generate a new application. And no, now I'll, I'll call it uh, Eclipse con Thorn and use the Thorn channel implementation. I'll download that one. Unzip it as you would do with any one of this. And open it up. So I've, I've got the application here, uh, and um, you, know, you see it, it's exactly the same application, and I think, at least I experienced this morning that Thorntail has a little problem with uh, running on, on the latest Java version, so I'll just set a one I'm pretty sure works. So uh, I'll... Uh, I'll uh, rebuild it afterwards. But what I want to do here is to, to, to uh, create a new class, or an interface actually, which I'll, I'll call hello service. And uh, this hello service uh, sh uh, should be a, uh, annotated with an uh, JAXRS uh, annotation saying hello. Uh, I'll annotate it with uh, being a register REST client and I think I need the dependent annotation as well. And I'll add a method saying string hello. 
But this is all, all I'm, I'm uh, going to do for this one. I don't need the public even. So, uh, and, and then I'll go into the configuration and configure this. And, and you see, it's, it's always already here. So I'll, I'll just, uh, hello, uh, service. And I'll point it to my Open Liberty implementation, which has client hello. And uh, as you remember, the Open Liberty says, uh, hello, e EclipseCon. So if I go in here and, and say that this hello controller should call the uh, Open Liberty microservice. So here I'll inject the uh, REST client, the, the uh, hello service. And rather than hello world, I'll say hello and also plus hello uh, service. Hello. So uh, you see, I, I do a call to my interface that is uh, uh, generating a proxy to the call and calling the service. So the only configuration I add is to, to set the endpoint of the, uh, of the uh, service I'm going to call. So, so uh, that will say hello, Clipscon, and I say hello, and then the result of uh, this calling service. So if I build this one, This one will generate a jar for me as well. So we, if you're used to the kind of the program model from uh, Java E, where we create a, a WAR file, uh, uh, this is more familiar if you come from the Spring Boot world to, to just create the jar files. So I'll just run this one. Uh, and I guess uh, the um, uh, suffix of Thorntail. So I'll just start this one. So it's... Uh, Picking up and installing uh, the, 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 the fractions that is needed for, oh, it didn't work. Uh, something is wrong here. So, I'm not sure why this one wouldn't go. Oh, it's a port conflict with the one I already have running. So, I just have to find the uh, header on one. Uh, is it this one? This is Liberty. This is Thorntail. Where do we have the um, header on? This one. So I got a port conflict. So let's go back to this one here and start it again. So now it should be ready, and if I uh, go to this one on localhost 8080, uh, data, hello, it should say uh, something that I didn't expect. Okay, so I probably have written it wrong in the configuration here. Let's see. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, so I, the root of the, the service is slash data, so I have to rebuild it again. So now it should work. So what I'm doing now is to show how easy it is to, to, to call another uh, microservice uh, using the, the microservice uh, REST client. So now it should say hello and then uh, call the hello. And if it doesn't work, then I'll go and do something else. Okay, it won't work. So uh, the, the next thing I, I, I want to show you is um, uh, if I have time for it, I'll do some uh, do you want security or uh, fault tolerance? 
fault tolerance. Okay, so I'll uh, look at the the fault tolerance, and um, how this one works is that I, I have a, a a hello resource which is very similar to the one I've, I've been showing you. Uh, what I've done here is to set a, a timeout value of three seconds to this service. So I just I can annotate that any method of this will timeout after three seconds. And then I, I uh, say that, hey, I want a circuit breaker here. So if it fails three times in a row, uh, I want to delay for five seconds. And to just provoke this to happen, I, I say that I, I, I have a counter here, and I count to three, and the first three times I want to sleep for 10 seconds, which is more than three, that will ensure this uh, timeout to happen. So, so the circuit should, should open after three tries, and after the fourth, it should uh, uh, let them go through again, after five seconds. Okay? So, to the talk, and I just have to make sure. I think on this one is dependent on uh, on, uh, on Java 8 as well. And there we go. So I think this one is build as well. So Java jar target. Uh. So this one is running on uh, a uh, server called Pyara. Uh, and uh, that is the fourth implementation. So this is a microprofile 2.2. And uh, uh, while it's starting up, I'll prepare my browser a little bit so to make this a little easier. So what I'll do is to uh, use four browsers at the same time and hit this uh, uh, URL. I'll just have to check, uh, start it. Uh, where are they? There we go. And I think it's on, oh, this is the open tracing microservice patterns, this one. So this one is on, is it on 8080? I think so. Yeah. And it has the flash hello. And it is there. Okay. So I'll, I'll go in here and I say localhost 8080 slash hello. So this is the, the URL I'll be hitting. So I'll do this in, in four browsers, more or less at the same time. And, and you will uh, see what happens. I hit this one, I hit this one. Did it go wrong? Oh, it says local, so I'll, I'll just continue. There we go. So you see, uh, the three first times it should uh, time out. And if I go in here, uh, it says hello number four. So, so the, and, and this one is, is a, actually a fault tolerant time ex exception. So this is accepted that uh, I, I should get this uh, exception. What I could do if I don't want to have the, uh, the exception thrown uh, out that way is that I can go in and set a fallback. So uh, in this case, I, I could do a fallback handler and have this fallback handler do uh, say, uh, say something else. Or I can point it to a fallback method that will do uh, the thing when the when the timeout exception happens. Unfortunately, we don't we don't have time for uh, showing that, so I'll just go back to my slides and wrap it up. So what I did now was to to show the the, the configuration, and uh, I, I then uh, uh, demoed the the REST client or sort of demoed. And then I, I did uh, show you the circuit breaker functionality with the fault tolerance back. Uh, what I uh, didn't have time for was to show you the job propagation, but if you just uh, come up to me during a conference, I can demo it uh, on, on my laptop. And also the open tracing, where you can tr trace your requests uh, over services and, and uh, look at them at SIPKIN, for example. So to sum up, uh, the the uh, microprofile implements a lot of uh, the uh, microservice patterns. So if you if you uh, look look at the pattern catalog uh, of the microservice patterns on microservices.io, you will see that um, all of these specs correspond to to one of the patterns uh, there. 
So uh, another thing we're working with uh, currently is the relationship between Jakarta EE and MicroProfile. And uh, uh, I'm just saying, stay tuned, join the mailing list, and uh, uh, join in on the discussion because uh, Jakarta EE uh, and the relationship between Jakarta EE and MicroProfile today is that uh, MicroProfile builds on Jakarta EE technologies. And uh, we want to uh, make it sure that uh, Jakarta EE also can use the uh, MicroProfile technologies in, uh, in the future. So the, uh, the stuff I showed on, on this uh, talk is on my GitHub. Uh, you can read about the microservice patterns on microservices.io. You can uh, read on microprofile at, uh, at microprofile.io. Remember, start.microprofile.io. And Jakarta, you can find on jakarta.ee. With that, I think we have uh, minus two seconds uh, for questions, but uh, I'll, I'll take a question or two. No questions. OK, remember to vote for uh, the session in the app afterwards. Thank you.